So I looked all over the internet on YouTube and everything, and I did not see a good video or instructions on how to properly change the steering column on a 2000. So this generation of TL would be uh, Acura 3.2 TL. This generation would be 99, 2000, 2001. And I see some botched up instructions. So I'm going to show you the proper way to get the steering rack out of the car. It's unusual in this car, a little different than Honda Accord. This is a V6, but the year of this car, this generation, was very difficult to get out. And I'll show you how to replace it with a remanufactured... Here we go. Steering rack from Detroit Axle. And it is a big job. You're going to take apart stuff inside the passenger compartment, center console. You're going to take apart stuff under the car. You're going to lower the subframe. It's, it's a huge job. So it doesn't require hardly any specialty tools. Uh, you could use flare wrenches, but not required. You can get away with a standard wrench, 14 and 17. But anyway, it's a really, really big job. And I've seen some screwy directions on YouTube. So I thought I'd make a video and show you how I did it and what worked and how I got it out, how I got the new one in and put everything back together. Okay, on the steering rack, the steering box, it's not leaking here. I already wiped that off. That's coming from above it where it goes into the floor of the car. Try not to trip on my camera lens. Right there where it goes up in the floor of the car, you can see the drip, drip, drip. And that's where the problem is. The rest of the rack Looks okay. The boots are okay. This one, this strap they put on is kind of wimpy. Uh, Goodyear did that. It's a little loose, but the boot itself is okay. So the leak is coming from up there. Right where that little screw hole is. No, nope, above it. Above that screw hole. So I don't know if there's a seal up there that could be changed. You can also tell the leak is coming from the power steering because this reservoir is way down. This is the lower limit and it's way down here. Normally I keep it almost to the upper level. So it's, it's just leaking everywhere, even without driving the car. So we're going to dump out what's left in here and then uh, jack up the car, take off the wheels and take out the steering rack. And let's get started. First thing we're going to do is get as high off the ground as we can on jack stands, both sides of the front, block the rear wheels, and then take off the front wheels. Okay, you can see where it's been leaking in here. So, what we're going to do next is take off this cotter pin, take off this nut, and then either hit that to shock it or just put the nut on top and Take a hammer and knock this through. So we're gonna, this is the tie rod end. We gotta get that disconnected. Before I forget, make sure you've got your wheels centered. Put your steering wheel center, take your seat belt, lock it in place because we don't want this thing spinning around and messing up our clock spring. So the shop manual tells you to remove the airbag and the steering wheel, which is ridiculous. Just just do this. Just lock it with the seat belt so it doesn't go anywhere and it stays straight. The other thing I want to do before I get carried away is count the threads on here. 
So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm going to write that down. So driver side seven. So I can set the new one the same because I may end up having to take this off to get this out. So we'll see how much room we have to work with, but I'm going to write it down just in case. Okay, so let's get that cotter pin off of there. And hopefully you got new cotter pins. If not, remove this carefully and you can reuse it. It's better to have a used cotter pin than to have no cotter pin. Can't believe some shops return cars to customers with no cotter pin. It's a safety issue. Just like an aircraft, you wire things on so in case they come loose, they don't fall off. There. We'll save that cotter pin. Let's see what we got here. I think that's a 15. Get a different wrench. So it's a 17. I'll try and call out sizes as I go along. By the way, the lug nuts for the wheels were 19. If this is all rusty, spray it with some rust blaster or something before you start. Clean up the threads. Now what you could do if you had to, this is all going to be new from the Detroit Axle Company. But if you had to, you could put the nut at the very top, even with the top, and take your hammer and bash it down, you know, hit that down. So otherwise you could, you could see someone's done it here before with a hammer. You can shock that and it'll fall out if you have a big enough hammer. Also a puller that you could put in here and you could pull this apart. Sometimes it screws up the rubber boot. There's a lot of different methods. Um, preferably you have a shorty sledge hammer. I don't have a sledge, but you'd hit it right there. Or you can knock it through. Okay, before I beat it to crap, I'm going to also try this. I used this before on upper ball joints, so I'll give this a try. Okay, this worked a whole lot better than trying to beat the crap out of it. So, this is number 25297 OEM tools. So, you just get this between the rubber and there, and then you crank on it with your wrench, and it just pushed it right down. And like I said, the key is leaving this nut on top so you don't damage the threads, although we're gonna get new ones anyway. There we go, that's off. So I'll try and show you the whole process on the other side, but there's a lot of different ways that all work. So let's get this cotter pin off. Doesn't look like this side's been beat up. I don't think this side's ever been off in 23 years that this car has been around. Um, the other side uh, a Goodyear mechanic at the alignment shop did have to get in there. You could see by the zip tie that was on the rubber boot. He had to change the piece inside there. And uh, it was a little too wobbly to pass alignment. So he probably took his sledge and beat that thing off. But that's okay. It doesn't hurt anything. This is a cast iron suspension. It's not aluminum. 
like a lot of new cars. Save that pin. I think I got brand new ones, but anyway, um, before I spray that, let's get that 17 millimeter nut. Let's get it off of there. These aren't on super tight, I'm guessing. 40, 50 foot pounds. Um, if you got penetrating oil, otherwise WD-40. Try and slip these hooks between the rubber boot and the cast iron. There we go. Okay, as far as we can get it. Screw that down on top of the nut. Get our socket. Start cranking down on it. There we go. Popped right out. That's what we want. That off of there. Ah, it's just spinning. Nothing to hold the other end. push it up so it has something to hold on the other end. There we go. That's out. Save that nut. I think the package comes with a, a new one. But if there's not a new one, we have to reuse this nut. I think it comes with a brand new one. Okay. Inside the car, we're going to take this rubber boot off and there's a clip here we could pluck off and a clip here and then some rubber buttons and let's get that off. Okay, just get a screwdriver in there and just pry this clip off. There we go. It's off. There we go. That's one clip. Looks like I don't need to take the other clip off. Just pull down. I ah, need two hands. Okay, these big snaps, I basically had to get a screwdriver behind there and just pry. Ah. Get a bigger screwdriver on that one. Okay. Get a big screwdriver in there and just Right until it comes out.
why they didn't put something with threads on it that you could just screw in and instead of this thing that's impossible to get out. There, finally got it off. That's underneath the carpet here. To the gas pedal there is one more plastic button to pry out so there's three plastic buttons i'll work on that one now i only got all three buttons out ended up using needle nose pliers to pull it and now let's see if we can get this whole thing to come out there we go whole thing's out and that's what it looks like so this one spring clip you can leave on the middle. Just pull the one off the top and the three buttons out. Good God. What a freaking nightmare to get that thing out. So now we can see that bolt is what we got to remove. Well, there's two bolts. They say remove both. See that one there? That bolt and that bolt and then you can pull this shaft up and off taking that it looks like a small CV joint wow. I'm going to crawl on top of the car and I want to disconnect the upstream oxygen sensor my downstream is gone because someone stole my cat but I want to get the exhaust out of the way okay so I'm on top of the engine. This is the rear head. So right here, I don't know if you can see that. My fingers are wiggling here. That is my upstream oxygen sensor disconnect. So let me see if I can put the camera down in there. That right there. This is what I want to disconnect. So I gotta squeeze those connectors and pull that off. So if I get a little more on the driver's side, I can show the clips a little better. There we go. So I gotta squeeze this one right here and then pull it apart. Okay. I squeezed and I pulled and it came apart. There we go. And then the other downstream sensor, I'll show you that one from up here, is closer on the passenger side. I can't move through here. My arms aren't long enough. Uh-oh, broke my light. Maybe it just turned off. There we go. Okay, so... Next to our fuse box, we go diving down into the camera. You should be able to see it hanging right behind that yellow tape. See the connector hanging right there, just above the yellow tape. This is the, the wire that goes down. It's right there, it's disconnected. Um, because I have to have my cat replaced. They stole the downstream oxygen sensor with it. So I have a new O2 sensor for downstream and that's the connector right there. So under the car, here's the upstream oxygen sensor. We're going to lower this out of the way because it's kind of blocking the steering axis and it's kind of sharp where the bad guys cut it so I don't want to cut myself. So all of this wire up. I'm going to take this bracket off. There's one bolt that I'm going to take out. Right there at the top of that bracket. Uh, let's see if I can show it to you. That bolt right there that's illuminated. 
Now take that off and then this bracket comes off and then this wire will just dangle down. That's why we went way up there. You can see the white connector there where it's disconnected. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Okay, so hopefully I've got some good light for you. Get our box wrench 10 millimeter. There we go. And there's just one nut holding this whole bracket on. Because there's like a, a dimple in it that keeps it from wiggling around. Okay, I got the little 10 millimeter bolt out of the bracket. And now that just comes down. There's our clip. And just hang that there. Now we're going to take off this bracket. And we're going to take off the, the three stud nuts off of the front and rear exhaust. Okay. Let's do the front exhaust, 14 millimeter with a long extension. Get on there and bust those loose. There's three of them. You can see we got that rear exhaust off. We got the front exhaust off. And Honda doesn't use gaskets. It's just machine fit. So it's just hanging by this bracket now. I think we could just push it back and out. Either that or undo these two two bolts. Either that take maybe take that bolt and that bolt off or just push it through the rubber. Either way this thing's cast iron. It's heavy. So I'm going to use two hands. I forgot to mention the nuts on the studs for the exhaust are 14 millimeter. There's three in the front, three in the rear. So this bracket holding the exhaust, the two nuts are 14 millimeter. So let's take those off now and get ready to catch this thing. Okay. One more bolt to go and the exhaust will come down. I'll hold that with my knee. There we go. Last bolt has a long collar on top. See that collar? See that long bolt? It's on the left side of the bracket. So now, wiggle it, drop the whole exhaust onto the ground. Okay, that's out. Light out of the way is probably blinding you. So there is the exhaust out of the car. So I'm going to slide that out of the way and get that out so we have clear access to our steering rack. Let's empty this reservoir. Let's see, we need a 10. Right, that's an 11, let's get a 10. Okay, 10 millimeter.
bolt. And we'll disconnect the lower line on this side here and get it to drain out some pliers. Get some kind of a cup to catch it in. Okay, I got a little green cup under there to catch the fluid that comes out. Okay, hopefully you can see. I'm going to pry this line off on the other side. This line is a little more rubbery. The other ones are hard as rocks because they're so old. Okay, here comes the fluid. Hopefully our pan is big enough. There we go. So far our pan is big enough. I'd like to get this whole thing off so I can clean it really good. Gonna get a second tray for the other hoses. Okay, got my tray out and emptied it without spilling a drop. Let's see if we can work off these other hoses. Let's see if they're really old and dry. But I want to get this reservoir out. There we go, nothing coming out of the bottom one, that's good. Make sure I mark these so I know which one's top and bottom. There. Okay, no additional fluid came out, that's good. Clean, I'm cleaning this out. And if you look down in the bottom, there is a filter. So before the Steering fluid returns, I'll show you. I'll put this screwdriver in. Now I'll look down in there, and you'll see the screwdriver is underneath that screen. So it's a very fine particle screen, and there are some particles on top. So I'm trying to flush them out. So I'm going to turn this upside down and blow some cleaner through there, and hopefully they'll come out through the top. Okay, we'll let this just dry out. I think we got all the particles out. Now the bolt says to undo three nuts and one top flare nut, just the top one. So let's climb on top of the engine and reach down and see if we can do that. Top of the engine. So what the book is telling us to do, get the camera down here. So I can guide you. Okay, it's saying to undo this bolt, this bolt, this bolt, and the top flare nut, I'm a little confused because there's several. There's two stacked here and there's one here. So let me go to the book and clarify. And I think it says to remove this hose right here. So we'll undo that screw and take that rubber hose off. Uh, so I know this is definite, 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 definite. Let me check the book on that. So this hose, we call it C in the book goes over to the speed sensor. So that thing right there is the speed sensor, which I've changed before because it was leaking a lot. So there's two hoses. One goes to the steering box here. So we'll pull that off. I think it's gonna leak fluid, so I'm gonna undo these nuts first. They're probably gonna leak fluid too, we'll see. So well, these three bolts are 10 millimeter and they are really on there. So I'm going to have to get a bigger wrench 
a bigger socket wrench, ratchet, and bust them loose. The nice thing about this Acura TL is different than the Accord is that there's all this room to work. Really surprising. So I used a larger ratchet and got these loose. I do have a oil pan laying on the floor underneath this because I kind of suspect a lot of steering fluid is going to come out of here when I pull these bolts and this hose. So we'll just be ready for that mess. Yeah, there's the left bolt. I'm going to keep these in order because there might be a length difference on each bolt. There's the middle one. There's the right one. Yeah, they look like they're similar length. Pull this hose. Already, because I think there's going to be a mess. So you can at least direct the mess down to the pan. This hose laying here, that's for my vacuum line for my rear engine mount that uh, still haven't replaced the rear engine mount. Need to do that one day whenever I get money to buy the mount from Honda Acura because it's expensive and the aftermarket ones don't work. There we go. Yep, a little fluid coming out. It should be going into my pan. Yep, I hear it dripping in the pan. So we'll just leave that towel there for now and figure out which of these has to be disconnected on the flare nut. The book is really not nice. of doing this job. I went to Lowe's a couple days ago and bought these flare nut wrenches. I've never had any flare nut wrenches in my toolbox. So this is a metric set, Japanese car. So I think I need a 14. So we'll try the 14 flare nut and I think I know which one of the three nuts the book is talking about. So I think the Acura shop manual is telling me to do not these two stacked ones but the one behind it. It looks like it's bigger than a 14. Let's see this wrench is also a yeah, 13 smaller so I'm gonna have to go get a bigger one but uh, let me get my camera so you can see it better. So it's not these two stacked ones here, it is this one here where my wrench is. And some mechanics will get a crow foot flare wrench and use a long extension and a ratchet and go through by the driver's front tire. But uh, this car I think you can do it from up here without getting a fancy crow foot. Let me get the right size. Maybe it's a 15 or 17. So let me go back to my toolbox, get the right size, and I'll tell you what it is. Okay, it is a 17. So the way these flare nuts work, you get on the pipe and then you slide over the bolt, the nut. So we want to go lefty loosey, push down on it. Try to get it away, get some more angle. I'm going to have to get the camera out of here before I break it. Okay. I'm going to take a little break from yanking on that flare nut. Couldn't break it loose yet. So I'm going to reinstall the reservoir for the power steering fluid. 
it's all cleaned out and dried it in the sun it's nice and toasty warm so let's stick our two lines on this side and we got the big line on the other side that goes to the pump or from the pump either way got our pliers I'm not going to fill it up yet because we've got to put the new rack in so fluid would go everywhere if we took the rack out And one more, one more clamp. Now for the little bolt that holds it into, into there. That is ready to receive fluid when the time comes. Okay, since we're still struggling with this 17 millimeter flare nut right there, I'm gonna take a little break from that again and go under the car and remove some stiffener plates. There's two stiffener plates and then uh, a bracket with a rubber cushion. So it looks like there's Two bolts on that one, two bolts on that one, and two bolts on that one. I think I've seen on Honda Accords where these bolts for that rubber cushion are on top and you have to go lay on top of the engine to reach them and you got to reach way down. Kind of nice they put the bolts on the bottom on this car. So let's work on the stiffener brackets underneath now. Under the car we're catching the drip 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 from the gearbox on the power steering. So this is a stiffener bracket. Let me get my glove off so you can see my hands. So this is a stiffener bracket that we have to take off. So there's going to be one, two, three, four bolts in that. And one of them already came out because we took the bracket that was holding the exhaust. Remember that one that had the uh, the uh, sleeve yeah and it had the rubber mount here so that's out and we got to do one two three four to get this stiffener out and it says we got to get this stiffener out so that is one two three and then we go over here and to this bracket we take out these two bolts and there's a piece of rubber underneath there and this thing says it's marked FR for front on it, so you face it the right way. So you can see the guy's grinder or sawzall or whatever hit my steering rack, but it didn't really damage anything. But you can see where they stole my cat. Um, so let's get some wrenches under here. See what size these are. I brought a 14. Let's see if these are 14. Yes, they are 14, 14, 14. They're all 14. Oh, good news. They're all 14s. So let's get to work busting those loose. Just got this bracket off. 
And here are the bolts that came out of it. You can see three different sizes. Put my lighting. Put my camera down. A little bit. So we have one, two, three for the three holes in this bracket. So I'm going to keep those in order so I don't mix up the sizes. Looks like, okay, the two N ones are, yeah, they're the same. So there's just three sizes, two sizes out of the three. These are the same, the middle one's the long one. It's important you remember how these go back in. Okay, so now we're gonna start working on these, on this stiffener. So one, two, three, four more bolts to go on this stiffener until it's out. Ah, I need two hands here. Okay. There we go. These bolts are not in there with a dire strain, I'd say like 40 foot pounds. That's probably all there is on that. This one's a little more. Yeah, still about 40. It's not like lug nuts on the wheel, which are 90 to 100 foot pounds. This is about half of that. I am using my half inch ratchet with an adapter down to 3 8 make, make it a little easier on my hands instead of just using a 3 8 If you got power tools, good for you. I don't have any power tools. It might be nice, but sometimes people use power tools to put the bolts back on and do more damage. It might be okay taking them off, but you really shouldn't use power tools to put them back on. See a little bit of corrosion there. Last time I drove back on New Year's from Utah, northern Utah, above Salt Lake City, it was snowing and the roads were really bad. Ice everywhere. They probably had salt from the day before or something, but this car is pretty much corrosion free, salt free car, except for those two bolts, oddly enough. I'll probably take those out later, clean them up. Brush them off, oil them, put them back in. I don't like to see corrosion anywhere in my car. It's always been a Southern California car. This was a lease return. Oh, long bolt in that one. Very long. Let's keep these in order. So this car was a lease return. I guess a realtor did a 36-month lease. Returned it at the end of 36 months. I think it was just shy of 50,000 miles. I got it written down somewhere. That's when I picked it up. So it probably only had Honda dealer service before that. So let's put these all in order and see what sizes we're dealing with here. This is the original steering rack. I'll show you the mileage on the car. 615,000, I think. This rack has never been out, had one little repair there. This section, um, that joint was like really wobbly and it should be firm. So I was getting an alignment and the Goodyear guy says, I'll just change it while I'm in there. So he did, but it didn't last so long. So this is a really long bolt too. I'll stick that in there. So we have two really long ones. I'm gonna put them in the holes. Okay, I got the rear bolt out. I'm working on the front one and you can see the steering rack already wants to jump right out of the car. So I'm going to leave this one the way it is. So it holds it in the car. I've still got two things to do. I got to get that flare nut off and then I got to go inside the car under the brake pedal and disconnect that U-joint that hooks to the steering column. And then this thing will be ready to come out. 
Also, it's almost noon and I'm waiting for my new steering rack to come from Detroit Axle. And I called them and I said, do you guys get these from China? They said, no, they actually refurbished them right there in their factory in a small town outside of Detroit, Michigan. So when I called, they said they had one in stock and they were going to ship it same day. They said they only had one. There must have been an inventory error because it didn't arrive when it's, they said it was going to arrive. So I called them and they said, oh, there must have been a problem. So we had a guy refurbish one right there in the factory with all new parts and put it on the FedEx truck. And I've been tracking it across the country. It's supposed to arrive today between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. It's almost noon. It's not here yet. So I'm hoping I'll have this rack out. And then the FedEx truck will pull up with my new rack. And I'll just check the uh, sizes of everything. Make sure it's exactly identical. And then throw it in here and bolt it all back up. So hopefully this will be a one-day job and it'll be done. And then I can go get my catalytic converter. I was going to order my cat. Um, when it got stolen, I wanted to put a uh, tilt sensor alarm in, which I did. That took a while to get parts. And then uh, this thing leaked all over my driveway around that same time while the car was sitting. And then I ordered this because I, I couldn't drive it down to the muffler shop it's like 25 miles away it would be just pouring steering fluid and could do some damage to the pump um, i don't care about the rack i care about the pump um, so it's it's been a long month of hardly any driving so i'll get this thing back on the road soon we'll get this rack in today then we'll get our cat in and then We'll have to get the alignment done, and then we'll have to reset our um, idle because it's going to be all screwed up from having no cat on here. So we'll get it ready so it could pass smog, the California smog coming up in a few months. So got to get this ready. Okay, let's get a good shot of how this is in there before I take it apart. So it looks like this. That is a 10 millimeter bolt. That is a 10 millimeter bolt. So let's get in there with a box wrench and bust it loose. Well, that's really in there. Let me get another one to make it longer. Okay. Old mechanic trick to make your wrench have more leverage. Take another box. Try to do this with one hand. Hold the camera. So go like that. Get it on there. And now you have more leverage. So you can get that nut to move. It's really in there from the factory never been off before. Okay. I'm going to put the camera down because I can't do this. I can't hold the camera and get two wrenches on there. It's really cramped underneath the dashboard. Okay. Got my two wrenches together. It was probably 30 to 35, 40 foot pounds on there. Broke it loose. I'll just get that loose and we'll go get the other one loose. I think I can use a socket wrench. Put a long extension on the other one. Okay, for the bottom one, I got a long extension on there. It's probably 35, 40 foot pounds.
Okay, I got both of them loose. I'm not going to take them all the way out. Let's see what we do here. I think that'll move this up and off the other one. I don't want to smash my camera while I'm doing this. So. See if I can get that off of there. I'm just going to leave it loose like that. And then when I pull the steering rack and I wiggle it and pull it down, it'll probably come right off that U-joint. It's a spline shaft, so it should pull straight down off of it. On top of the car again, that little diversionary brake did me good. I came back to this, put a little flat piece of wood against the other brake line so I don't damage them. Got my two wrenches locked together and just pushed down like crazy and boom, got it loose. So finally got that flare nut cracked loose. So let's go ahead and get this second wrench off of here. Don't need a second wrench anymore. Just work on loosening that flare nut all the way till it comes out. Okay. Working on that. I think it's put some light underneath the wheel well so I can see better. Okay, I'll keep working on that till it's all the way loosened out. I just took out the other bolt that was holding the steering in, so now I have them both out. blinding you here. So that's the uh, passenger side bracket and it has the rubber mount there so the cut in it is towards the front. So we'll leave that on there until we're ready to take it out. Well, we can take it off now. There we go. We can take that off now. Ooh, whole thing is loose now. So, there is the piece of rubber that goes with that bracket, and on that flare nut, you can use a regular 17 open end wrench, 17 millimeter, if you don't have a flare. When I was uh, loosening it, the flare wrench just didn't have the reach to uh, keep moving it, so I ended up just using a 17 millimeter open end wrench regular to get it the rest of the way out. So now we got everything under the car disconnected. So on top of the car, a piece of string here. I was able to pull out this one has a rubber O-ring on it. I pulled that out. I'm trying to pull the one next to it out. And it's being stubborn. So I tried wedging a wrench underneath there and pulling up without bending the pipe. I'm trying to pop it out. It should just be held in there with a rubber O-ring. And I'm not sure why it's got so much weight in it. And I've got this flare nut backed all the way out. The pipe is still inside a little bit. I think as I wiggle the steering rack back and forth, left and right, it'll work its way out. This is the only one that has me concerned right now. Put this piece of string on it. I've got to get that to. I've got to get that one to back out of the way because uh, I don't want to break that off. I don't want to damage that line getting it out. Okay. I got the rubber hose off there. I got that that one pulled out of that hole. You can see the little rubber O-ring. And I got this one pulled out of that hole. 
So I've got that flare nut backed all the way out. So everything is disconnected here at the steering box. So I think we're ready to pull the steering rack, wiggle it around and get it off of the steering column. Under the car, we want to grab this steering shaft, pull down to get it off of the steering column spline. So we're gonna go down a little bit and then towards the passenger side. So the first thing that's gonna happen is it's gonna come off the steering shaft spline. Second thing, as we move towards the passenger side, that flare nut hose is gonna come all the way out. And then we're gonna rest it for a minute, check everything that it's clear before we pull it all the way out. One thing preventing me from getting this off is this nipple is sticking out and hitting this brace. So looks like there's some nuts on it. I should be able to pull that off of this housing. So put down there with the camera so you can see what I'm talking about. This nipple is hitting this cross frame. So I think I could take these nuts off. I think there's probably two nuts, one top, one bottom, and take this off of the steering box. So I think that's blocking my path. Coming back to the directions in the book, it says to remove both the bolts and the steering column. I had them very, very loose, but not all the way out. So I'm gonna remove them completely and see if I can get that to come off the shaft. I completely removed both bolts. Now let me see if I can get this to come off the shaft. It looks like I got more movement. Not all the way. I'm supposed to lift it up. Not quite off the shaft yet. Pretty close. It's close to being off, but not all the way yet. Let me play with it, put the camera down and play with it more, I'll get it off. Okay, I was finally able to lift it off, used a screwdriver and pushed it up until it popped off of there. Now I'll just let it rest just like this so I can put it back on when I get the new steering rack in there. So hopefully we can hopefully you could see up there. There is one. This lens in there. There it is. That 10 millimeter bolt. Because there's a nipple that's hitting right there. You see right there? Right there, that nipple is not fitting through the frame of the car. So I'm going to undo that 10 millimeter bolt with a socket and a bunch of extensions. I already took the top bolt off. So I'm gonna break that loose. There we go. And see if I could take that nipple assembly out of the steering gearbox. I'm going to get that out and then I can get the rest. Let's see. top one out, that bolt was about two inches long and it barely fit coming out. So let me see if I can get it all the way out to get that nipple off of there. There's the bolt. It's about two inches long. 
There is, wiggle this around. The nipple assembly is coming out. I don't know if I can pull it up or down. There we go. So that, it was in there like this. That was the hang up because that long nipple sticking out was hitting the frame. So I undid, undid two bolts. You can see the holes there to get this long nipple assembly out of the way. Now the rack should easily come out. What a pain that was. Now I've got it out. Okay, Good look at it. These are about two inches long. And looks like it has a flare nut fitting. And here's the back side. It's a machine fit surface with no, no gasket, machine fit. Oh, it looks like there might be a rubber washer up there. Let me look for that. I'm wondering if I could have removed that flare nut. The shop manual from Acura does not say to remove that, but I'm thinking that probably would have been the easy way to go to remove that. But let me see what I can find. Okay. I am going to finagle this thing out now. Everything should be disconnected. Hope I don't have to take out any subframe parts. The factory manual says you should not have to. Okay, the factory manual says to go ahead and remove these. So I'm going to take a 21, eh, maybe 22, and a 17 on here. That's 17. I think the other one's 22. Let me verify that. Okay, I got the right wrenches now. Check the lighting. Okay, I got 17. And I got 22. I'll just separate those two. Now the book says to reach up and get that rubber boot. They call it a grommet next to the flare nut there. So I might do that from on top of the engine. So let's get that boot out of the way, I guess, so you don't tear it when you're pulling this stuff out. So I'll go up there and grab that boot off. Retrieve the boot. So this is the bottom side. It goes like this. And there's an arrow. I guess that points to the front of the car. So it goes this direction facing the front of the car. With that side down. Okay. Try one last ditch effort to do it the way the book says, where they've got the tie rod ends off, but they still got the boots, and he finagles it out of there by pulling it towards the passenger side, and then down, and then over towards the driver's side, and it's supposed to come out. So I'm going to take off the tie rod ends. So I'm on the passenger side. I've got a 14 and a 19 and just work these two wrenches against each other and I already broke it loose so you get them very close to each other. Hard to do this on camera. Get them very close to each other and then work them against each other like that and boom this comes loose. You're just holding that one turning this one clockwise in. I've already counted those threads before I did that. So now I'm going to take this nut back off, just put it on here temporarily to hold it up. This 
So, like I say, the Detroit axle is supposed to have all new parts. Now I should just be able to turn this off. This will save about a foot on both sides together, be two feet. I just really don't want to lower the subframe. I know some guys do it that way, but that's a lot more work. The book says you don't have to, so let's see if the book is lying. Okay, that is off. Go around and do it on the driver's side. Get the driver's side off and then we can have a little more room to work. Well, oddly enough, on the driver's side, I don't know if it's because Goodyear worked on this car, but this nut is bigger than it's supposed to be. It is a 21 now. So the other side was a 19 and Get the right wrench here. Maybe it's a 22. Yeah, it's a 22. Let's get these wrenches so that they work against each other. See, I want this one to go down, that one to come up. So, Trying not to block the camera. Okay, we're in closer. Maybe I can lay on my back and do this. Work these wrenches towards each other. Squeeze. I could tell someone else worked on this car. This should not be this tight. These wrenches a little closer to each other. Hurt my hands as much. Okay, that is unbelievably tight. That mechanic way over tightened that. Okay, finally got it to break loose. I had to put my wrench on it, put a hydraulic jack under the floor and jack the wrench just to get it to break loose. I tried two wrenches on there, I couldn't get it to budge. That's why I don't like other people working on my car because they use the wrong size nuts and bolts. They use the wrong torque specs. Good God. So now I can finally take this tie rod end off. I soaked it in WD-40. Don't have any more penetrating oil all out. But uh, as you can see, the WD-40 did go all the way in there. What the heck did that guy put on there? What is that goo? Okay, that's unusual. All right. So now I'll try and follow the shop manual again. Get under the car and wiggle this thing and see if I can get it to come out without undoing the subframe. Okay, this diagram is the biggest lie in the whole book. This inner tie rod will never fit past that piece of steel. This is one big steel unit. So 
it's not going to go past that. So what I've done is I took off the whole splash guard from the front of the car, all the plastic pins, or rivets, and then once you get that off, get your 17 millimeter deep socket and find four of these and then two other frame bolts. And when I used a piece of PVC on my socket wrench, so I got my socket wrench and I just put this as a cheater bar. It's very thick PVC, it will not break. And I actually had to use my legs to kick on it to get it to break some of these loose. So there's two on the front and then there's two on the rear by the tie rod ends. And then there's right above the tie rod, there's two frame bolts right there. Right there. Get some better light here. You got two here, so until I've loosened that. And you can see right here with that bolt, I've gained about an inch already by lowering it. I'm going to try and snake this tire, uh, steering rack out once I get enough clearance. It's going to keep lowering it. And of course, underneath the transmission, I have a piece of wood and my jack because I'm lowering the whole engine transmission, the whole front subframe. I'm lowering. You can see right here, it's about finger width already. I'm going to go as far as I have to go until I get this steering rack out. You can see I've got a little bit more room already. I'll get it out so right now. So I've got a 15 socket. Use my little PVC breaker bar. Just going to undo these two bolts right here on the engine mount. So maybe we can lower another inch. So every time you lower these frame bolts, like a half an inch, remember to lower your transmission jack and you'll see the whole thing, the whole sub-assembly with the engine transmission settle down to that half inch that you just gave it in the bolts. You can see how much adjustment I've got in there already. I've got like, I've dropped the sub-assembly over an inch. Have both the front frame bolts completely out and I just lowered the other four bolts and I'll show you how much room I've got already I've got the whole frame lowered by that much about an inch and a half two inches and I still can't get this out because this whole thing is like a big cage of steel and it's all welded together so I don't know where this thing could come apart to get this out other than continue lowering the whole engine transmission subframe until I'm almost to the floor that seems to be the only solution to show you on the new shaft On this car, from lock to lock is three full turns plus this tiny little bit. So I marked a starting point here and cranked it all the way one direction, made a mark on the shaft, cranked it all the way the other direction, made a mark on the shaft. So we'll split the difference in those two little tiny little marks when we center the shaft. So, and then once we center the shaft, and so it was three full turns, so it'll be one and a half turns, plus we split that little difference, and then we'll mark the shaft so we can see it in the car. We'll mark it straight up and down so we know if we need to move it a tiny bit before we put the steering column on. What I want to show you here is 
we crank this counterclockwise like we're making a hard left turn to make this boot as short as possible and then grab it and pull it up so that's the way I want it to look in the car to pull it out because the frame up here only has so much room because this shaft it's like this you can only move so much and you can't go any further so we'll go all the way over until it hits that frame and then hopefully on this part of the frame we'll have enough clearance we'll put some tape on there too that we could pull it down and get the left side out you know go all the way as far right as we can and until it hits pull it down and once this is down pull it back this way to get the passenger side and out of the car I think that may work so we'll give it a go so now we gotta get this automatic transmission shift cable out of the way I think that's the last thing stopping me from getting the steering rack out so it says to put the transmission in reverse open the console remove this nut rotate the cable remove the floor heat shield oh boy Okay, another big job in itself. So inside the car, you got to remove this center console. There's two screws in the bottom. All the way in the bottom is a little piece of rug. Uh, lift that up. Undo those two screws. There's some screws here, here. Pull the side panel, a couple of screws. Anyway, you'll see all the screws. You got to take the, disconnect the heated seats because there's two screws next to the OBD2. And be careful, don't break anything. So that's a heated seat for the passenger. And then down here, you see that nut on that cable? We gotta undo that nut because that's the cable that's in the way of dropping the steering rack. So that's what we are after. We gotta put the car in reverse. You'll actually have to pull it all the way down to first and second gear to get this center console off and the the black surround around this you just pry it up with a putty knife very carefully okay so let me get this let me get this nut off so we can get that black cable out of the way of dropping our steering rack okay so we put the shift lever into park so this nut is easier to get. Used a ratchet and a 14 millimeter socket. Took that off. Pulled this off. And now it says to rotate the socket holder, the, the socket that holds the whole cable. Rotate it counterclockwise a quarter turn then slide it out. Okay, so quarter turn counterclockwise and slide out. Okay, so this here has to rotate counterclockwise. So this, see this little tab? That has to come out and up quarter turn. So I tried grabbing this big piece back here couldn't do it anyway I'll get a screwdriver maybe two screwdrivers and try and push and twist and turn to get this to turn without breaking it anyway that's what we're after this this black thing here has to rotate counterclockwise a quarter turn 
and then you can see it will come out here. Okay, see this rubber boot? Pull that rubber boot off and I can get a better grip on this to be able to turn it. Okay, finally got it turned and out of its socket. Is to remove this heat shield. So there's uh, two bolts, two nuts, and then we can get to the the cable here underneath this heat shield. And there should be a bracket for that, and then we could pull it through out of the console of the car. So hopefully these aren't rusted or damaged. Try and be gingerly at getting those off. Pushed out of the way. So now, here's where it comes through the floor. It says disconnect that nut. Okay, if you pry this rubber cover off, you can work the whole cable out and lay it on the floor. Now you have all the room in the world to take the steering rack out because this cable is not an issue now. Okay, so we pulled this over as far as we could to the right. So this is the issue. This small area that you have to work with is the limiting factor. You see that? That cutout, that is so limiting on how you can move this thing. I hope I got that removal on film because I don't know if my camera was on. Anyway, I hope I got it out. Hope I got it on camera. So, what I did is I got the input shaft all the way to here. That's as far as it can go. And then the left inner tie rod, you bend it up and it just clears past here when it's compressed all the way, like you're making a sharp left turn. And then once you get it down, you go that way so you can get the passenger tie rod end out and you lay it on the floor. So that was a big job. I hope I got it on camera. I don't know. And there's the old beast on the floor. So this bends up as you're pulling it out. And protect the splines. So I was able to put my pliers on here and crank counterclockwise like I was doing a left turn and that compressed that all the way and it was just enough to get it out. That is the one step that the book does not tell you. The factory shop manual from Acura does not tell you that. And I've seen a lot of different YouTubers that nobody has a 2000 Acura TL that they did this on. And it's kind of unique to this car, the way it's all caged in. You know, the top is caged in. You can only get it to go this far. Oh, my God. Anyway. Yeah, this thing was leaking up here. Almost looks like it's blued, like blue from heat. Anyway. It was gushing out of here. On my input shaft, I put a line horizontal. That would be center. So this has three turns lock to lock and a tiny smidgen bit more. So I just divided the difference in that smidgen bit. And that is going to be our center. So we could see this from inside the car behind the brake pedal when we put the steering column on this line needs to be horizontal uh, so that we will be centered in the rack 
So now that I got that mark, I'm going to crank this side, make a hard left turn, shrink this up, protect that with tape, and put it in the car. The old rack, I put this piece back on, and I took the nipple out. It's a 12 millimeter flare, comes out very easy. The book doesn't say to do that, but that's what I should have done instead of taking these out. But anyway, I will hold this until I get the new rack in. And then when I put this in and this in, I'll put this in and put my hose on it. And then I'll connect this flare nut over here. So we'll be connecting two flare nuts and putting three nuts on and one rubber hose with a clamp. Put the passenger side in and feed it up there. Get that boot all the way in there. Okay. heavy. This is about 32 pounds. Well, this is hard to do on your back. There we go. A little more wiggling. Get this boot in there without damaging it. There we go, there we go. Okay. I just let that rest right there while we get everything adjusted. And that's how you put it in. Just the opposite of taking it out. We got the steering shaft in. We can put this transmission shift cable back up through the hole in the floor and put the rubber boot back in. Go up inside the car, make sure it's going through correctly. We'll put that bolt and put our heat shield back in. Going up inside the car, and I turn that quarter turn piece in the center console. And I didn't put the bolt on yet, but I did put the eyelet where it goes. So let's put this cover on. Like a one-handed mechanic holding this camera. I'm gonna put the camera down in a second. And it's all seated for a watertight seal. And now put that there. Get our 10 millimeter bolt. Always thread things by hand before you stick a wrench on it. No cross threading. Okay, good and tight. Now for the heat shield. And the heat shield, put it back in. There's two nuts. At the other end, two bolts. That's in. Let's go back up top. There's a hose bracket that I undid earlier as I was lowering this frame. So I'm gonna put that back in there and I'm gonna put this little bolt 10 millimeter in there. Anyway, I can't hold the camera to do that so I will put that bolt back in. I put this on upside down. So the arrow facing front goes this way, and this is the upside because these cutouts fit around all those valves. So we can do it from down here since we got the frame lowered. Where's our 
Here we go. There we go. There we go. Fit that around the there we go. That fits better. So that's the way that boot goes on there. I raise this subframe up. I need to expand or center the shaft. It won't be perfect. I can get inside the car and look at the markings on the top of the input shaft, but while I can get my pliers on there, I'm going to turn it and get both sides almost equal. And I'll look inside the car and see if I can see the indicator mark to see if I, it's horizontal. Um, so before I move everything up and I can no longer get a pair of pliers on there, I'm doing it now. Measuring from the starting of the rubber boot, both shafts are now at nine and a half. So we should be close to centered. I just got to be able to see that mark on the top of the input shaft. But since the frame is so low, can't really see it from inside the car yet. Stiffeners. And I've got this bracket loosely, just one, one bolt in there with the rubber piece. So I think you'll find better luck installing the long bolts here first and then before they're tight put in your short bolts next so there's four the other one is uh, part of the remember the exhaust hanger the one with the uh, one with the sleeve so there's no bolt there yet until we get that so let's get these four tight and then we'll go over here and tighten the passenger side bracket with the rubber piece okay and the cut goes towards the front of the car okay we got the four bolts on this bracket tight we got the two bolts on this one tight and now we got to put this bracket in and this is a stiffener it doesn't hold anything it's just a stiffener don't know why they didn't just make a welded piece, but you got to remove this to get the shaft out. But uh, long bolt in the middle, two short ones on the end. Okay, this last stiffener is in. The three bolts are tight. So let's let's work on. We're gonna do the exhaust last. So let's work on lower down let's remove this cap from the shipping and put this 17 millimeter flare nut on there and then we'll go up on top and let me get under there we'll go up on top and we'll connect those 10 millimeter bolts three of them um, there's shipping covers you got to pluck out and I'll reuse those when I send back the core so it doesn't leak in the FedEx truck. So let's do this big nut now. That big, take that cap off, do the big one. Okay, so from under the car, I want to check to see if I've got this centered. So I'm going to check using a dental mirror. Now, this is not the last opportunity. I just want to pull the tape off. And if I got to use my pliers, I'm going to do it while the tape is on there. But once I move the sub frame up and the shaft is up inside the car, I can still make an adjustment by putting the tie rod ends and connecting them to the wheels and then taking the wheels in my hand and pushing them to steer the car before I connect the steering wheel. So that would be my last opportunity to make this centered. So I'm trying to hold a camera, a mirror, and this all the same time. Okay, so you can see my two black marks. They're a little bit off, so we gotta turn about uh, 
I think, about a quarter turn clockwise. And then that should be straight. I'll put everything down, put my pliers on, check it one more time, and then pull the tape off. Okay, I put that flare nut on. I just used a, a deep socket, 12 millimeter. Put that on. And just used a regular 17 to tighten that one down until the last turn. Then I use my flare wrench. If you have a crow's foot 17, it'll be really easy to do it from the side. I don't have a crow's foot 17. But, you know, when you got the frame lowered, that's the time to do it. Now I'm just going to take off these two covers and do these other two. There's three 10 millimeter nuts. Okay, we're back into the car. We're going to hang the exhaust, or what's left of it. And uh, as soon as I get this car drivable, I'll go down and get my new cap put on. It takes one day to get. So we're going to put on these two 17 millimeter bolts with this hanger bracket. We'll just put the flanges up and set on the um, subframe to hold it while we put the bolts in. And then we'll put the studs, nuts, whatever came out on the flanges. I personally find it's easier to hang this exhaust bracket first. And you can either hang it with the exhaust or just hang the bracket and then stab it through there. It's like an arrow, just stab it through, it's rubber. Um, and now I will hook up the flanges to the exhaust manifold. This is back together. I'm going to crank up all the frame bolts. So I'll jack up the car and turn all six bolts. And then last, we'll put the tie rod ends on, hook them up to the suspension, and then we will put fluid in and turn left to right a couple of times and then start the engine, turn left to right a bunch of times with the engine running so that the fluid will circulate, get the air out. It'll make some groaning noises while that happens. So as it's running, I gotta keep adding fluid to the reservoir because it'll pump through the system and the reservoir will get empty, so I gotta keep it full. It's all tight. Uh, I gotta tighten these two on the side motor mount splash tray on and all the plastic rivets to hold it on. Put the tie rod ends on. Turns out Detroit Axle did not send new tie rod ends, so I gotta reuse the old ones, but these are okay. The boots are good and everything. So I will put these on right now and I will count the threads and put it in the same position it was before. Okay, our 17 deep socket. Put that on there. And then we'll put our cutter pin through here and we'll tighten this. We'll hold this with a wrench. This is a 17, this is a 19. We'll tighten that up. I think that's 19. Anyway, we'll lock these two together and put our cutter pin here and then go do the other side. And in, this was 19, held it with a 17. It's in there. So get both front wheels pointed as straight visually as you can, and then this will be the toe adjustment. So I think the toe might be off just a tiny bit. That's why we're going to go get an alignment. So you could just grab it and position it, and that is going to move the input shaft. So if we go inside and look at the input shaft, we can look for our center mark and you can see it is horizontal and now we could put the steering column on that input shaft that's what we were after everybody on YouTube seems to freak out that oh my god if you move the steering rack you're gonna be all messed up no because you counted the threads on the tie rod ends, you put them back the same, you point the wheels straight, and I already 
marked my shaft of what center is on my new rack so that looks right to me and you know anytime you do these big changes on a car you're going to need an alignment to get the toe perfect otherwise you'll get rapid tire wear so we're going to try and get in the alignment shop tomorrow and get it aligned so i'm going to put this steering column back on right now and put the two bolts in it okay we got our two bolts in and it is torqued down as tight as I can get it so the steering shaft is connected to the steering car okay so we got one, two, three buttons in, and we got the metal clip and the other metal clip. So this is all done. The carpet is pushed back in place. We're done inside. Okay, so now on the passenger side, we got to put the whole center console back together. So we'll start with this nut onto there so that we can shift the car. We'll tighten that up and put all this plastic back in place and the heated seat buttons back in, all that stuff. Our console is all put back together. The rack had some blue colored fluid from Detroit Axle. And so I only ended up using uh, two full bottles, which is 24 ounces and I've gone left right left right a bunch of times turned off the engine turn it back on and Looks like that's all it's going to need to, uh, to stay within the uh, Almost upper level, so I think we're good Put the wheels on and torque them to 100 foot-pounds Okay, so everything is done ran the car no drippy drippies Let's call that job done.